coming up in this FinCast, a look at the opaline gourami. It's a beautiful fish that anyone can keep, and it really loves its owner. One of my other hobbyists turned me on to Kimmy Fuhr to have me try it to see what I thought. He said it was an awesome product. Till this day, four years into the hobby, I continue to use Kimmy Pure. I recommend it to all obvious. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. And today we're looking at the Opaline Garami. I think this is an overlooked fish in the hobby. You don't hear a lot about it, but it's absolutely a gorgeous fish. You don't see a lot of fish that really present true blue colors and there are some things you need to know about this fish if you if you want to keep it but it's a great fish for beginners but it's also I've got it in my planted tank and it is a beautiful addition to the aquarium. Now, I hadn't kept this fish really since I first started keeping aquariums back in literally like the mid to late 1970s. Shows you how long I've been keeping fish. Now first I'll show you the fish here in my office aquarium. Then I want to give you an update on the tank because it's a tank that's been fairly successful as a planted aquarium. And then we'll take a look at how to keep the opaline gourami, talk about why people like this fish so much and also their ability to actually breathe air. Now here's a look at the tank. As you can see, my plants are doing quite well. In fact, I just trimmed everything back. The lower plants are mixed crypt varieties and I just love the way that the fish swim in and through these low plants. It really makes the fish feel comfortable and secure. The tall plants that are spreading out over the surface are star grass. There are a few varieties of Anubias in the aquarium. They're very happy. And in the back corner is a variety of moss. It might be flame moss, but I can't remember because I planted two or three different varieties of moss at the same time. And then the tall sort of stringy plant is Crinum calamistratum, and I did a whole video just on that plant, and you can click on the card if that's something you want to learn more about. It's absolutely one of my favorites. It's also easy. I do inject CO2, and I add no other fertilizers. The lighting comes from a single high-output LED strip light designed for planted aquaria. The light temperature is about 6,500 K and I keep it on for six hours a day. I've featured this aquarium a few times on Fincasters. Had a bit of a bad run actually after introducing these garamis and the pearl garamis. I ordered them from my wholesaler. Of course I was too impatient to quarantine and so many of the fish I already had in the tank got some sort of internal parasites and died. I never saw any ick or anything that resembled an external parasite, but ironically the gouramis never got sick and they have done just fine. And I'm curious if anybody knows any illnesses that attack many fish but leave gouramis alone, so please add those in the comments section down below. At any rate, I have two opaline gouramis now and three pearl gouramis. I'll talk about them maybe in a future FinCast. While many of the fish were dying, my guppies started reproducing for the first time in two years, or maybe the fry are just surviving for the first time since my epistos went to the great river in the sky. They may have been eating the baby guppies. So anyway, I left some of the wild-growing star grass at the surface for the young guppies to hide in, and so far it appears none of the fish that are in the tank right now are going after them, and the guppies do come from a mixed batch, so I'm anxious to see what colors they turn out to be. And I won't be putting any other fish in the tank because I think once these guppies grow up, I'll have a very busy aquarium. There are uh, bunches of different plecos in this tank. All of them seem to have survived the plague that went through. And I had a school of seven snakeskin barbs. That's now down to three. My horsehead loach is doing great and feeds actively even with the light on, which is great because that's a fish that can be nocturnal and hides in the gravel a lot. So what I have is kind of a high-end version of a community tank. It's been set up for a long time. The plants are, are growing well and the mysterious illness hasn't claimed any additional lives in a long time. 
Now, if you're watching this video because you have a starter tank and you're looking at Opaline Garamis in particular, I think they're a great option, but there are a few things that you probably want to know about. First, it's a beautiful fish. As I mentioned, there aren't many truly blue fish, and this one is inexpensive and easy to keep. And you gotta love the long pectoral fins that they use to explore their environment and even occasionally other fish. The pearl garamis have it too, and it's just a really nice, unique, distinguishing feature on garamis. Now these have been line bred, which means that fish breeders have done selective breeding to get the most beautiful fish, and now they're available all the time, and they almost always look exactly like this. They're originally descended from the three-spot garami, which you can still get as well. The gold garami and the platinum variety are close cousins, but essentially the same fish as the opaline in different colors. My fish are about three inches long, uh, the opaline does grow up to be about six inches, and at that point they can become a little less peaceful, so be careful. Mine have not attempted to eat the baby guppies, but I suspect when they get up to be six inches long, the opaline garami might make a meal of them, but so far so good. A lot's been written about how the larger garamis become friendly with their owner, following them around the tank, begging for food, and so forth. And I've seen that behavior with cichlids and oscars in particular, but so far I haven't noticed that with these guys. But again, I've only had them for a couple of months, so if it happens, it will be a bonus. But people online really talk about how this fish loves its owner. Let's take a look at how to keep the opaline garami. Again, it's easy to keep. The pH can be anywhere from 6 to 8. Temperatures in the 70s are fine, up to about 82 degrees. It's an omnivore, so give it a good mixed flake or pellet food. Also, some frozen meaty foods occasionally would be well appreciated. Start out with a tank no smaller than 20 gallons and be prepared to grow with the fish. I keep mine in a 55. A 35 is, is probably a good place to start. They do like plants and hiding places. Live plants are a bonus, and this is a fish that will swim all over the aquarium. You'll see it midwater, you'll see it along the bottom, you'll see it in the top, and you'll see them going in and out of your plants. They get along well with other community fish, but again, beware of putting them with thin nippers like tiger barbs. Opalines, again, will get more aggressive as they get larger, but they're a slow swimming fish, and nippy fish will drive them crazy. This fish breeds with bubble nests created by the male, which will have a, a longer dorsal fin than the female, and it is considered one of the easier fish to breed in the hobby. So far, I've not been able to determine the sex of my fish, but they are well behaved, and remember that the barbs in my tank are snakeskin barbs, not tiger barbs, although they do look similar, and these snakeskin barbs are not fin nippers, so I'm good there. Thanks for watching this FinCast. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the Opaline Garami. Again, a great community fish, a good starter fish if you're getting into the hobby, and I think you'll enjoy it. Please subscribe to FinCasters, and don't forget to click the bell so you get updates. FinCasters is also on Facebook and Instagram. And now I want to show you a bit more footage of my Planted 55 with a little comfortable music in the background, so enjoy that for just a moment. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next FinCast.